welcome back folks. Uh, welcome to another episode of Wise Lives. My name is Nick, I'm one of the uh, anchor uh, interviewers here. This is Delroy Hall. Uh, Delroy is the chaplain of Sheffield United Football Club in the glorious north uh, of England. Here we go. If you are a Sheffield Wednesday fan now, you might want to look away now. <laughs> But today we're going to talk about what it's like uh, to um, volunteer, but to be in the middle of the life of a big football team. So I wanted to ask you some questions, Darwin, mm-hmm. because yeah. we, you know, we've done another podcast and we talk serious stuff about God and stuff, mm-hmm. didn't we? Sure, sure. But uh, there, was, there were some questions that, um, that a football fan would like to know. I'm a football fan. Did, okay. did you grow up as a football fan? or Never went to a match. Uh, I was raised in a in a Christian home whereby you didn't go to matches. Okay. Yeah, I kind of raised in a kind of very very conservative Pentecostal thing. So you didn't go to the pictures. You didn't wow. go to matches. You didn't go you know, to cricket matches. Lots of stuff you didn't do. Cricket yeah. being inherently evil. Uh, well, well, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So so some of the so the watch it on TV. The guys watch it on TV, but we wouldn't go to a match. Oh, okay. So, but that in many. Areas has kind of changed now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of changed. And and uh, in fact, my mother is eighty. Well, my mother's eighty four now, but she went to her first football match last year, eighty three years wow. ago. That wouldn't have happened, but she went. Did you take it to United? I did. Yes, uh, it was the whole whole match, and um, she really enjoyed it. And um, I, my my sister was there, my niece, and um, my mother um, doesn't watch football as such, and. Um, I looked over and I saw tears running down my sister's face because when both when we laugh we kind of kind of get shed tears, and so I saw my sister laughing her head off and and tears um, running down. So I said, "What's the matter?" She says, "Mum," because it was a penalty in the match. Oh. She said, "Mum," I said, "I says, what do you mean about mum?" She said to me, "She says, Sandra, the game finish." So she thought with the penalty and then Sheffield United um, scoring at the end of the game. So my sister just thought it was so hilarious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, mum went to a match last. Last year, and she absolutely loved it. What's it was to like? absolutely oh, first time, eighty three, possibly the oldest Caribbean woman in the uh, in the, <laughs> the whole nice. stadium. But she absolutely loved it to see the people, the roaring, the singing. Yeah. And she didn't get all the words, mind you. So it's good That's job she did. Probably for yeah, the best. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. But uh, but yeah, she had a great experience. So tell us, uh, how did you uh, how did you begin as a as a chaplain uh, at a club like that? Um, well, I, um, I was approached by the pre- previous chaplain. Um, he had spoken to uh, another pastor who was a real ardent blade supporter. And he said, um, I, I'm too busy, but I think I know somebody who can do a reasonable job. So the previous guy was Alistair mm. Beatty. came to see me. And I said, oh, Alistair, I'm really busy, you know. And oh, I don't really follow football. That was 2000, July 2017. So I was on a break from uni. So he said to me, what are you doing Thursday? So I said, well, nothing. So well, just have a walk around with me. Just have a feel of it. So I did. I met up with him and um, walk around. And so, so he introduced me as the new chaplain. <laughs> so I said, Alistair, I'm just walking around with you, just kind of getting a feel of the thing. This was Thursday. Uh, but I've been told since he's very good at that. He does that type of stuff. Right. I didn't know that at the time. So anyway, we, we kind of had that discussion. And then he said, there was, so after we'd done the visits and stuff, I said, um, he said, what are you doing a week on Saturday? I said, well, I've got some teaching, but it's just kind of recap, but I can change it. So I did that. It was a Barnsley match, so he got tickets for the Ooh. director's box all and right. all the rest of it. That's, uh, for anyone who's not <coughs> too local, that's the, one of the local darts. That's right, yes, it is, yeah. And um, I remember sitting down in the director's box and thinking, I can't believe this. But I've not said yes at the time. And then he introduces me to the owner of the club then and so forth and all the vice presidents and introduces me as, his, as a chaplain. So I got all these swarm of guys just kind of, you know, welcome me in and really made me feel welcome. So I say to folks, I've been in post now three years. I haven't said yes yet. Uh, but I absolutely love it. Having said that, they haven't paid you a bean either. No, they? they've not. No, I need to kind of do something about it's that. But, voluntary posts. but um, it's the same up and down the country. Isn't yeah, it? yes, it, it is. Yeah, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah and that's quite helpful because it means that you're not on the payroll. Which absolutely. Means that, does it does it change the way that people relate to you? Do you think? I think there's an assumption that I'm paid, but oh, then okay. I, there's an assumption that people, as time goes on, they get to know that I'm not. So I've got no axe to grind. Yeah. Um, in fact, I do speak with the players actually, one on one. Um, a very personal conversation. Um, I'm very much aware of the, um, according to current statistics, 40% of professional footballers, when they retire within five years, they are bankrupt. 40%. 40%. So, 
for example, I've worked out just sitting down with pen and paper. If a young player starts at 20, he's on 25 grand a week for 15 years, which will be, as time goes on, he'll peak and be earning more than that and bonuses. But if he earns 25 grand a week, which some do, um, 30, and he finishes, so he starts at 20, finishes at 35, that's 18 and a half million. Wow. Um, so um, the questions I ask players and I say to them, um, I've not spoken to all of them yet, but some of them I have. Um, I'd like to ask you some questions. I don't want to know facts or figures, but I'd like you to consider them seriously. How long, how long have you got left in the game? Are you looking after your money? Uh, one player I spoke to, he's no longer at the club. Um, he started laughing. So he said, I've just turned late 20s and I've just bought my first house. Wow. Revs, I have wasted a load of money. Yeah. But he said, I've just woken up. I said, right, make sure you look after your money. Make sure you invest. And do not dismiss the fact of getting yourself educated. Mm. Uh, when you finish, well, two things, all that is that you, your, your career can be cut short. Yep, anytime. Anytime, can be cut short, or fortunately you can go to 35 or whatever. Not all players want to be coaches, but if you look after these things, when you finish, you've got options. There's nothing worse than finish something, you've got no option. But if you finish something, you've got four or five avenues you can go down. That's it. So, and is it the case that nobody had really ever had those conversations with those lads before that? Well, I spoke to uh, a parent, and they come from another city, and one of the father was with um, a club, and one 20-year-old lad got 100 grand at the end of the month, and he asked an official, what support do you give? Mm. So there's none. I think there are. I think if some of the lads come from good homes, yeah, they've got the backing of the parents who really kind of steer them. Yeah. But not all of the lads come from that kind of background. Yeah, of course, no. So um, I've never had a player say to me, "It's none of your business." Yeah, because I'm not intruding. But I'm just helping to kind of think through things. Um, I think it's possibly getting better. Um, but you know it's a big thing you know for yeah. 10 years you're going up running onto the pitch all this adulation then it stops you know what do you do with all the emotion and all that type of thing so yeah. just kind of helping them to kind of think think a little bit ahead um, I met one player um, he, play, he, was a full, he was a professional player and what he did while he was playing he did a degree and he's a journalist now yeah. so I, th I just think that you know, they start training at maybe 10 o'clock, finish at maybe 2, 2.30. The rest of the day is, is there. So if they can tack on to a, a degree or something like that, why not? So what is that? I mean, the, the common the common con conception of some football fans might be that, you know, they turn up for training, they do a bit of a kick around, and then uh, they're off to the golf course, something like that. I mean, what's the life of a professional? Is it is it hard work? Okay, they, they do go for training, and I remember speaking to a physio, he said that he's worked at a lot of clubs, but he said at Sheffield United, they train like they play. They, they, they train hard, mm. and I know that the manager trains them hard. It's, yeah, it's got, him, it's you know, work, I think. Yeah, oh, yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. When I'm kind of, when they finish training and I'm kind of great in the hand, I say, how you doing? Revs, I'm tired, I'm knackered. <laughs> so he, he works them hard, he yeah. does work them hard. And I think if, you know, if you've done any form of physical exercise, you know that you need, your body needs some time to recuperate anyway. Right. Um, so if it's playing golf, it's playing golf. But I think, I think when we see footballers, that we, we have an illusion about, about their lives. Yeah. And I've spoken to many dads, they've said they wouldn't want their, their kids to be footballers. Because right. it's a hard life. Yeah. Um, under a lot of pressure. Uh, if you can imagine on most teams, there's, a, there's only 11 positions, but you may have two or three players... Uh, vying for that position yeah. so and then if you're out injured um, the player the person that comes in could play perform really really well football is about points and invariably money so you might lose your place footballers want to play so there's lots of tension there lots of pressure um, so there's these kind of hidden mm -hmm. hidden challenges mm -hmm. that go on behind the scenes I mean I suppose it's the same in any workplace or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. In a professional environment like that. But I think where money changes things, we've got, right. we've got pressure of the fans. So what I do, um, I tend not to ask footballers uh, personal questions. I've said to them, I'm there if I'm if they need me, but yeah. I don't I don't make it a thing to to put my nose in the business. However, what I do do, um, if I know they're long term injured, also I I tend to write them a letter, hmm. um, and I think they're kind of 
quite shocked actually because I think a lot of their communication with people is either an email or wanting something but it's yeah. just this letter out of kind of pastoral concern yeah. um, and I think some of them and so what I did when they were promoted I wrote all the first team and others a personal handwritten letter so I don't do so if I'm going to write somebody I still write handwritten letters I don't do you're old school yeah very old school absolutely old school yeah so I handwrite letters cards um, so tell us about the uh, what what was it like to get promoted because um, for those who don't know Sheffield United got promoted to the Premier League uh, just last uh, summer um, so this summer <laughs> so they're now uh, in doing very well as yeah. we speak we're recording this in November yeah, 2019 yeah. Uh, Think, Fifth yeah. in yeah. the league, Ooh. which is ridiculously good. Yeah. So what's I mean, is there a buzz around the place? Oh yeah, there is. Well, there's there's the well, there's the anticipation, or the expectation, or the excitement of being in the Premier League. Um, when it all when it all happened, they they had to do some modifications for the ground because the Premier League has particular standards okay. and so forth. But with that comes a lot of pressure. Yeah. A lot, and with pressure, there's stress. So. Um, there are some teams they don't want to be in the Premier League because it's too much pressure. Oh wow! Uh, there's one particular team which I'm not named. Their 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 um, their ethos is to get players, train them, develop them, sell them on. Yeah. They're not interested in being in the Premier League because because the cost it's like a big business. As the bigger yeah. the business gets, it takes more money to run it, and there's oh, more yeah. pressures and all the rest of it, more legalities to to adhere to and so forth. So yeah. so as much as the Premier League is there. There's there there's the hidden pressures and I guess it's interesting. That's my kind of role dealing with the the you know the fallout. So you uh, you walk the floors. I mean, how does it how does it work? Because sometimes I've heard chaplaincy described as coming alongside people, yeah, yeah. just kind of being there. Mm-hmm. You can't force yourself in, can you? No, not so at all. Um, how, how, do, how do you get? How do you? How have you made friends? And... Um, well, just by well, um, one of the, the the first thing on the training. Um, on the training, chaplaincy training, is a picture of a lemon. So part of you actually feeling comfortable with being a lemon, because half the time they don't want you there. Okay. Um, not that the atmosphere changes, but, you know, what do you want a chaplain for? But actually, yeah. when there's a crisis, that's when you need a chaplain. Okay. But then you, your effectiveness is dependent on the relationship that you've developed. Already. Already. Course, yeah. um, so mine is just being alongside. When they're training... Um, I'm, I'll, I'll be on the edge of the play. I don't interfere. Do you actually go down to the training ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll watch yeah, yeah. Them and... yeah, they're fine with it. Um, oh, okay. Do you ever throw any advice in there? No, 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 no. I'm not no. a, um, I'm not a, um, I'm not a football coach. Whisper in the ear of the manager. No, no. <laughs> no um, well, actually, the manager and I get on really well, and cool. um, and I think you know um, what we don't realise sometimes. If you're in business, for example, or large organisation, the air is really thin at the top. There's not many people you can go to yeah. and who you can trust. Um, so if the manager or somebody wants to talk to me, they need to feel and know that they can trust me. Yeah. Uh, whatever they say, it stays in the office. Right. That's where it stays. Um, That's actually really valuable, as you say. It is. I oh, mean, is. we see them in the media and so on, and they just give uh, the same answer every time. Yeah. Actually, uh, Sheffield United manager is pretty good at being mm. funny. He's very honest sometimes yeah, in his is. interviews, but mostly, you know, because yeah. why would you say anything different mm. in front of the TV mm. crews? But as you say, there's a, there's a, there's a, every, they're just people at mm. the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, and people that are vulnerable, people that feel frail at times, they are human just like you and I, but we have an illusion about them, you know, the players or the managers, and we think, well, they're earning all this money. But, you know, that can be problematic. So, I mean, has it ever, have you ever been able to pray with them? How do you, how does the Christian faith come in? Um, I've not prayed with anybody yet. Um, not with them. Not with them, I'm sure you pray for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, for them. And you'll tell them sometimes that you are. Yes, and, and, and they're very grateful. Um, there are some players who, when they run on, uh, I remember one player, he's not at the club now, but he, he did the sign of the cross, and I remember... Mm. I mean, a chap with I said, I see what you do, you know, when you run on the pitch. He says, well, what would I do there? So I told him. He says, you see that? I said, yeah, I do. And he said, look, Revs, if I can walk on the pitch and walk off without being injured, I think I can give thanks. Right. So there's a there's a sense that, um, and for some of them, their faith might be very, very private. Some of them, not really interested. Yeah. Um, so there's a whole mixed bag, you know, the views that you get on the football pitch or the views you get in the office 
They're no different. Um, yeah. So my my walk is actually just being there, literally just being there. When I'm not there, they know when I'm not there. When I'm there, they know when I'm there. Um, I, there's a, I, I said to the um, players that um, I didn't want their... I didn't want to know where they lived or their phone numbers, but a couple of have given me their contact details. And um, I contact um, um, the manager and his, his wife, but I don't make it my, I don't get in the way. I told them I'd never bother them. Um, so they know that I'm there, yeah. but I'm not texting them every week or. I mean, it's actually, it's a, it's a common, it's growing in it's how common chaplaincy is mm -hmm. now, isn't it? I'm really pleased that the, the, the business world and people like the, the emergency services mm -hmm. and so on mm -hmm. hospitals will recognize the value of uh, of a person or a group of people who have the pastoral heart of mm -hmm. and, and care for them the whole person it, it's about time frankly isn't it that yeah. we realize that the bottom line doesn't just include finance but um, there's a spiritual level to everybody there is and i think um you know having worked for the royal infirmary less many years ago and at the time uh, in the early 90s ambulance for example, paramedics didn't have access to kind of counselling and they were oh, meeting wow. some horrific yeah, stuff. Must be awful. Um, the police the same way. I think things are changing there. Um, and certainly I think, I, if I can say, which is not out of term, football industry is brutal. Yeah. It really is brutal. And uh, people have asked me, well, what were there for? And I've said at some point to, to kind of humanise it because it's, you know, it's, it's hard money. And it's hard life. It's a very close community, very macho community. Mm. And at some levels, it's it's incredibly brutal. Wow. Um, That's definitely not how it's perceived. It's all the glamour no. and all mm. the rest of it. Yeah. So um, uh, what's your, who's the nicest person? We don't have to tell us your name, but I mean, who's the nicest person around in that club? Is it the cleaner? Um, to be honest, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with this. I spoke to the manager some time ago. I said, where have you got these lads from? Because they're so friendly. The actual footballers. Uh, yeah, um, I was told by one of the senior players, again, he's, he's not there now, um, that some of the young lads, because of lack of experience, they can be a bit off with you or a bit aloof. But some of the young lads, they're 22, 23, even younger, they've, they've been very warm to me, very, very warm. Um, right. And I said, I've introduced myself and I said, at some point I'd like to have a quick chat with you. I'll never get into your business, uh, but to say why I'm here and uh, I'll just kind of ask some questions for you to consider about your life, about your um, kind of career. Yeah, yeah okay, Rev, yeah, yeah, sure. And I've yeah. never... That's great. Yeah, so it's... I've, I've felt very, very welcomed. And yeah. I possibly due to being there now for three years, yeah. and they're coming in and the older lads know who I am. So I think it's a case of, you know... Making a bit know, of a way for yeah, you. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and also you're, uh, you're kind of... I mean, you're chaplain to the whole club... Uh, mm. which technically means all however many 30, 40, 50,000 mm. fans yeah, there yeah. are dotted around mm -hmm. in the city. Um, so you write a column for the yeah. the weekly programme. I, I so do. You, you're I, quite, quite uh, I mean, that's a lot of people. Yeah, um, and I've been surprised at who's uh, read it. Um, so a couple of examples. So so basically what I do in the, the column, 200 words, I ask them. 200 words? Yeah, 200 okay. words or yeah. thereabouts. And what I do, I take a moment from a game and write about it, then do a wider reflection. So, um, gosh, the one that's coming out is the Burnley match. And something that I saw, which I thought was un unhelpful, at half-time, Burnley were down 3-0. And I saw the fans, the, the away fans, the Burnley fans, just hail a load of abuse and, I guess, frustration at the club. And I thought, that's not helpful. So then, so I saw that. So then I write about then how, when in our lives we've messed up or not doing well, the last thing we want to be done is to be reminded about it. But we need to kind of be pointed in a way that can actually help us. So I kind of do stuff like that, really. Um, and I've been surprised at who has been reading it, who've commented, people I didn't think would read much. They've, they've read it, they've commented to me. People who I've never met, I've heard stuff about that they've been reading it. So where it's going, I... Isn't that a fantastic opportunity mm. though? So you're 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 discipling mm. the the city, yeah, or at least a half, <laughs> roughly, the red half of the yeah, city. Yeah, you right. get yeah, to yeah. disciple. There are some yeah. in the blue half who won't come very yeah, near course. Bramall Lane, yeah, sure. but uh, maybe once a season. Uh, so that's amazing. What a great opportunity to, to set the tone and to remind mm. and to point people to a higher cause and a higher mm -hmm. way of living. In, in fact, the hurly burly. 
Yeah, I, th- I think there's um, I met a guy recently. He's a Jewish Jewish guy, and he said to me, "Are you the Chaplin who wrote the first um, come for the first you know for the first uh, program in the in the Premier?" I says, "Yeah." He said, "It was very moving, you know." And I can't can't, can't remember oh, wow. now, but uh, he's, a, he's a Jewish guy who's not as we say Christian, yeah. but but obviously whatever I wrote yeah. also made an impact on it. Brilliant. So, so yeah. That's it. That's letting our yeah. light shine mm, in any uh, way. In any way. Boom. I'd love to ask you some more questions. So maybe offline we'll. Uh, <laughs> We're going to what cars do they drive? <laughs> well, uh, well, I, look, I'll be upfront with that one. As I've said to the players, especially the young ones, you don't have to buy a car that's seventy thousand pounds. Buy a car that's reasonable, yeah. and you don't have to buy something that's incredibly expensive. There's a player apparently at West at Sheffield Wednesday. He's got an Audi. It's over ten years old. He said he ain't changing it. Yeah. You don't. Class. You don't have to spend X amount of thousand pounds on it. There you go. You are discipling the club. Well done, mate. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much, Delroy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's Thank been you. a great, great pleasure. Uh, bless you guys. Uh, you. I'll do my best to get our friend Baz on, who's the chaplain to Sheffield <laughs> Wednesday, just to even that out there. He's <laughs> got a course. few stories to tell oh, as well. I'm sure he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we bless you. I pray that uh, in your uh, line of work today or in your sporting life, uh, you find the space to let l- the Lord God come alongside you as well and find ways to share just something of that hope and peace with other people as well. Bless you guys, we'll see you soon.